Hey guys, Ray from Love Your RV. So I'm back with another update on this 40 amp MPPT controller that I installed uh, sometime in the early summer. It's from a Bouge RV. They're, they're the ones that sent it out for me to test. Uh, I've, I've done an install video and kind of an initial review video. I've also done a video where I torture tested it in, in some extreme heat and kind of over paneling the, the controller. Both of those came out pretty good. No problem. I've been using it with no problem and testing it on and off. You can see here right now it's fairly sunny out 13.9 volts 19 volts into the controller. We're putting out 37.9 amps so almost full amperage there. The battery says 100% but it's not. It's because it's in lithium mode. I have lithium batteries and I think this thing's just set up to to look at lead acid voltages that can't deal with lithium as far as that goes. So anyway, this controller, I've kind of looked around online and it looks like it's probably made by a company called SRNE because uh, the, the exact same coloring and everything, all the inputs and even the manual is exactly the same. So I've also even seen some of the Renegies kind of seem to be similar because I was looking around and I saw there was a COM port here. That's what this plug-in display is. It's a little COM port right there. You can see there's a, a white plug with four pins. So I noticed that there was a available option, BT2, which stands for Bluetooth Module, and it had the same COM port. So I decided to pick this up to me, for me and see if it would work. So I, I got it off of a, a website called AliExpress. It was only about, uh, I think it was about $24 total Canadian, even including the shipping. So I thought it'd be interesting to, to buy one and just test it out and see if it works with this controller. I'll just plug it into the same COM port as this. And then there's an app to download on the phone so that you can look at your smartphone and see all the um, stats coming out of the controller. You can also more easily set up your user settings if you decide not to use one of the preset modes. Like it has AGM and lead acid and gel and also right now it's in a lithium setting. So uh, if you want to go into user settings it gives you a lot more fine control on, on your charge settings. So. Let me just plug this in and then we'll go in and hook up the smartphone and give you a look at uh, what it looks like on the smartphone. There you go. You can see I've just plugged it into the exact same port. I have seen other models that use more of like a, a, a LAN uh, or telephone type connector, you know, an Ethernet connector, but this one uses uh, one of these four pin affairs. Okay, so this is the owner's manual I got with it. And you can see I have the BT-2. There's also a BT-1. And it looks like it goes with two different controllers. The one that has the display screen and is much larger has the BT-1 Bluetooth dongle. And it uses, instead of the connection I have, it uses a RS, looks like 232, which is more like the telephone jack. And then this size of controller that I have uses the BT-2, which uses that uh, four pin plug, just so people know. So I had the BT-2. You don't want to order the wrong one. Um, and also down here it says Bluetooth, download Bluetooth app, app store, Google Play search, solar app. And it also has the administrative password for the for the, the thing to, to work the app. And you need that because if you want to change any settings or anything, it asks you for the administrator password. And you have to put that default one in. And after that, you can change it to whatever you like. So pretty simple instructions, just plug it in, download that app, and go to town. So let's go show you the app. Oops. Crashing everything here. Okay, so I have the app fired up, and you can see up here, this is my solar panel information, 18.1 volts. The current right now is 13.37 amps and 245 watts. So cloud has gone over, that's why it's lowered the amps quite a bit. Down here we can see the battery. Um, it shows 13.5 volts as a charging volts and the current is 16.6 .6 amps of charging current going in. Temperature, that's really the temperature of the controller, I believe. And that's what's going on there. Um, I just sort of ignore that. And then capacity I also ignore because I'm using a lithium battery. So they charge it, they're much higher 
um, voltage of charging so it kind of fools the thing into thinking your battery is charged when it really isn't. I have a separate device for uh, checking on my my charging of of my battery bank. Anyway there's also this load section down here that has to do a lot of the controllers will have a, an extra thing where you can run lights off it or something or a timer for load and stuff like that but I don't use that at all. So down here we have the monitoring, that's what we're in now. And then there's a device info and just shows you model numbers and stuff. The device name, as far as it pops up under the Bluetooth, is I just changed it to 40 MPPT. It just was a gobbledygook of numbers. Uh, we got settings here. So this is the, the most interesting screen if a person wants to set their own their own settings up. So right now I'm in LI mode which is lithium so that's a default setting they've put for lithium batteries but if I want to go in and fine-tune that I would go to user mode and in user mode I can go in here and change things like say I want that to be different and I want it to be oops. say I want to use 13.9 as my boost just go in like that and then I could go up here and I could just hit set. It takes a little second for the Bluetooth to contact the controller and then the controller to set it and then it will return and tell me that I was successful there. So I can confirm that. So it, it's pretty cool that way. There we go, 13.9 on the boost charge. Uh, there's also uh, load parameters, that's what I was talking about turning on lights and stuff with the load which I don't use battery parameters and also an interesting thing is record what it does is it tracks your uh, output of the solar controller over the course of the day so it tells me how much power it's generated there it says 1.641 kilowatts uh, charge amp hours today 121 amp hours max charge wattage 556 watts battery voltage and then it keeps a running total a 31 day total too so that's kind of interesting to look at and see how much solar you're getting on a on a day back to settings and then back to monitoring so like I say this one is called solar app there's also one called Renogy BT and I think that one is available in the uh, Apple store as well um, it's basically exactly the same App, which is what leads me to believe that Renogy is just using it using the same company. Anyway, either one of those solar app or Renogy BT seems to do the trick. The only difference seems to be the, the color coding of the app itself. Okay, that's about it. Seems to work pretty good. The app is eh, a little flaky because Bluetooth is always kind of funny. But it seems to do what I want it to do. I'm happy with it. Uh, this is where I got it, if you're interested. It's called AliExpress. Um, they shipped it uh, with 1620 Canadian dollars, and they shipped it for 843 So it was about 24 bucks for me Canadian. That's somewhere around 18 or 20 U.S. dollars. Um, but like I say, if you're looking to order it, you want to make sure on this connector here, there's different variations of that connector out there. So if you get the wrong one, it's not going to hook up to your unit. Um, you can see this, there's there have BT1, BT2, and I think Renogy even has its own versions of what the connectors are. So just be very careful before you order that you're going to get that right end connector. But it does seem to work with these uh, SRNE units this is what this one was listed as srnebt solar controller extended bluetooth communication uh, and also i'll give you a link back to my original post here testing out a cheap 40 amp charge controller from bouge rv and like i say i'm not saying this is the the best controller out there you should you should really want this one it's just kind of an option for someone looking to build a system a little cheaper than than other alternatives like you know you get something like this in say the Victron controllers which are great controllers very high quality but you sometimes you're going to pay two or three times as much money for sort of the the same capability so I have a, a, a video previously if you haven't seen it and also I, I did a torture test video on it Anyway, till next time, Ray from loveyourrv.com. Thanks for watching once again. Cheers, guys.